in the industry and profession of network marketing. Likewise. Thank you, Jeff. Pleasure to be with you all this evening. We, I'm really excited about tonight's call. You know, it's a subject that I'm super excited about, and we have two experts on the webinar tonight talking about it, how to build globally, something that's so, so very important. As you, met, as you mentioned, yes, we're, we're building, we're following the system worldwide. I actually, as you might know, just got back from Mexico, and it's, it's great to see people following the system. You know, for me, it's, it's a system of organizing yourself and following up with people. And it's exciting to see people carrying around these right here, the portfolios, the notebooks, and just having great excitement, you know, filling out the papers, following up with people. And, uh, you know, this is a, a system that works, as you know, wherever you're at, you know, with whatever company you're with. It's a universal system. So I'm super excited about tonight's call. The Sustained Prosperity System. We have an awesome guest speaker tonight. We're going to introduce him in a minute. Izzy Matos, who I met a couple years ago down in Puerto Rico. And I believe you were there as well, Jeff. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to take notes tonight. Um, also want to remind you that this call is being recorded. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Jeff. And uh, like I said, I'm super excited because I know you have had great success internationally as well as our guest speaker tonight. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to you. Thanks. Well, Jeff. thank you so much, Mario. It's such a pleasure to be part of you and, and what you're doing out there in the field, in the industry. And, and I've seen Mario at work. One of the beautiful things about our core team here that we're working with everyone that's on this call, it's all about caring for others. And those of you who know me, you know, I'm probably one of the most brash, hardcore, go to the juggler vein trainers and, and speakers that you could ever imagine. In fact, I, I, I look at the photos after someone brings me the photos after I've been on stage and it looks like I'm angry with the crowd. <laughs> it's like I, I'm trying to go through all the photos, trying to find that perfect photo to use for marketing. And it's like every one of them are like, you know, I'm just, I'm just intense. and but I was talking to someone just a few minutes ago, and this is, this is the truth. I am intense, but I'm intense because I care. I'm intense because I truly do want the best for the people that are in the profession of network marketing. I have a soft place in my heart for people who are in this profession. Now, we, we want to differentiate what the profession is and what the industry is. You've heard some people say, oh, we're in the industry of network marketing, or we're in the profession of network marketing. Both of them are actually true. We're, we're both in the profession and also in the industry as well. Now, what do you mean by that, you might ask? And let me just explain to you very quickly what that means. Well, I would like for us to learn these terminologies, and we're going to teach these terminologies as we go through the system of understanding what terminology is and in network market. It's almost like a different language. I call someone who is a lead, someone you have not spoken to yet. Someone who is spoken to already, we call that a prospect. In the same way, what is the difference between the industry and the profession? I look at the industry as being the company, the manufacturing facilities, uh, the companies that are out there, the corporate side of things, uh, distribution, fulfillment, uh, acquisition, all the different logistical things that keep the machine running, you know, the company side of things. Uh, that would be what I would call the industry. At, but at the same time, the profession, which is the field, the people who are in the field working the business, I would consider that I'm part of the profession. You know, we all that have been in the level that some of us have been in, we play both sides. We've done a lot in the corporate side and we've done a lot in the field side. So we've been working with the industry side of things and we've been working with the profession side of things. But I want us to practice when we refer to the network marketing industry or we, or we refer to the network marketing profession. If we're talking about what we do as leaders that are out there building in the industry of the field, I want us to call that industry of the field the profession because we're professionals. We're learning how to be a professional network marketer. 
those of you that are on this webcast, that is your goal. That's the objective of these calls, is to help you become the best professional network marketer you possibly can be. So we want you to learn how to be the best of the profession. So let's refer to it as the profession. Now, going on from that, we're gonna be talking about the subject of how do you tap into global market? There's so many people that have their attention on the, the area around them. You've heard everyone say, when you first start building a network marketing, focus on your friends, focus on your relatives, focus on your acquaintances, the people that you know the most. And that's true, you should do that. You find the people that are closest around you, live closest to you. I think that we're gonna cover some of this ground today of some of the mistakes that people make when they are building or trying to build internationally when they really don't know how to build in the international market. And so we're gonna help you understand some of the secrets of that. But is the international market, is the international, uh, is your opportunity to build in the international market something that you should focus on? Is it for you? Some people it is for, some people it actually, honestly, you shouldn't touch it. But if you have that desire, we wanna teach you how to do it tonight. We're gonna give you some hints. We're gonna give you some secrets that's gonna help you tap into an international market, wherever it may be within your company. And we're gonna give some life changing, true stories tonight of how we have done it over the years. And it's, it's been fun. I, I can remember, of course, we have our uh, guest speaker tonight from, from Puerto Rico originally, and he still has his beautiful home in Puerto Rico, but he also has a home up in New York, and he's going to be calling in from New York in a moment. Let me tell you just a, a beautiful little story. I, you can't do this with every company, obviously. I mean, it's a wonder that I didn't get in major trouble for doing it, but I did do something one time, and, and I've been very aggressive over the years. And I've calmed down somewhat, but I've, I've been very aggressive. In fact, Mario was with me at this particular company. And, uh, and they weren't ready to open up Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was part of the U.S. as far as the U.S. territory is concerned. But the company was not ready to market within the Puerto Rican market. I knew I had some leaders in Puerto Rico. And I knew I needed to get that going if I possibly could. I was building strong in the U.S. I was building strong in Japan. I was building strong in Europe. I was building strong in Russia. I was building strong in some of these other countries. But I wanted to do something in Puerto Rico. And talking about us being aggressive back in the day, this is a true story. Do not do this. But I did this. I'm not saying to do it. I'm telling you what I did. And I'm asking you not to do this. But I flew to Puerto Rico. I did 15 meetings. Now, remember, we were not open in Puerto Rico yet. Even though it wasn't, I wasn't doing wrong because we weren't pre-marketing. It's part of the U.S. territorial system. And obviously, I was, we were already licensed and open in the U.S. But the company was just not wanting to go into that territory yet. And I, I wanted to go anyway. So I flew to Puerto Rico, did 15 meetings in three days and it was the end of the week. I called the head office and I, I told some of the employees, I said, fill up all the fax machines. This is when we were doing fax applications. You faxed your application into the company. I said, fill up all your fax machines. Make sure they have plenty of ink. Make sure they have plenty of paper. And I told all the people that we were bringing in down in Puerto Rico, I said, don't fax your applications in until after the office closes on Friday evening. So I'm flying down to Puerto Rico, I'm doing meetings on Thursday and Friday, and we're really driving this. And at the end of the day, after 5 p.m. Utah time, mountain, mountain time, everyone started faxing their applications in. And I, I knew I had enough hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications going in that it, when they came back to work on Monday morning at that particular headquarters, Papers were everywhere all over the floor and every office that had fax machines receiving these faxes of applications and we opened up the country because we kind of forced the hand of the company. Now, I'm telling you this because, yes, I have gotten by with many things and some of these things were not necessarily correct. I'm giving you an example of this 
is not something I probably should have done. And we're going to talk about the right way of opening up countries. We're going to talk about the right way, the correct way of being ethical and doing things right. I wasn't unethical. I was just aggressive. Over -aggressive. If everyone did this type of thing, can you imagine? Can you imagine if every leader in your company did something that crazy? Yeah, I've been crazy. I've done some crazy things. If you had 20 leaders going into 20 different territories and 20 different countries doing something like that to force the hand of a company, the company could not handle it. It's not possible. However, I do want to teach you how to attain, how to attain connections in all these different places throughout the world so that you can gain traction in different areas throughout the world. We're going to tell you a few secrets. Now, some of these things are going to be duplicable tonight, and some of these things are not going to be duplicable because you're setting a pace, you're setting a standard, you're setting an entry zone. When you go from border to border and you're going into an international market to build your organization, you are going to be doing things that most people cannot do. Now, I'm taking in consideration when you're hearing this that some of you by the end of this call are going to say, I can do that or I can't do that. But both are going to benefit, the ones who can and the ones who can't. And the reason I'm saying that is this. It's important to know what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing, and it's important to stay within the areas of what you're capable of accomplishing. The biggest mistakes that network marketers make are trying to do things that they're not capable of doing or taking their attention off of things that they are good at to put their attention on areas that they're not the best at. So we're going to relate to everyone on this call, even though some of you may not even want to go international, you're gonna be able to give your friends and the people that are around you some majorly good advice. Now, why do I build international? I wanna go over that little, little point very quickly. I started going international years ago in my network marketing experience for one reason. I looked at it as a diversification of income, just like if you were buying stock. If you buy stock and you don't diversify, if something happens to the stock that you have all your attention in, you can lose it all. But if you diversify your stock, you're broadening your horizons and chances to be able to stay on top because where one area might be affected in a negative way, the rest of the areas may not be affected at all. So the more countries that you can build your organization in, in network marketing, you're diversifying your income. You're diversifying your check. Let me give you an example. Let's say you build a check of about $5,000 a month or 10,000 a month inside the United States. Well, then you build a check of maybe 5000 a month in, in Europe, maybe another 5000 a month down in Mexico, maybe another 10000 a month in Asia, maybe another seven or 8000 a month in Australia or New Zealand, or maybe even Russia, maybe even South America or Central America or Mexico, like Mario is so, so well versed in. So as you diversify your income and you manage it in that way, you're also going to have the mindset that you're not going to ignore any specific market. You're going to make sure that you don't ignore one market to capitalize on another market. You're going to look at those different markets as a different business model altogether. You're going to work the Korean market differently. In, in your mind, you're going to focus the attention on that Korean market. When you do, you're not going to be focusing on your other markets but you're gonna jump immediately off the Korean market onto your US market. And then you're not gonna be focusing on your Korean market. Then you're gonna take your attention off your US market and work on your Japanese market or your Mexico market or your Colombia market or wherever it may be, France, wherever it may be in your company. But you cannot focus everywhere at one time. One of the biggest mistakes, we're gonna talk about big mistakes because big mistakes is what hurts your growth. This is an emotional business. And one of the greatest lessons that you can learn throughout these webcasts is what not to do, not just what to do. Because when you throw fire out there, it works. When you build sparks and turn them into flames, it works. But when you throw water on the flames, 
it doesn't work. You want to keep the flames going and going strong. You cannot do that without making people feel extremely special. Did you hear that part? We must make people feel special. When I'm speaking to a leader, I make them feel that they're the only person in the world that exists in my organization. I'll never talk to a leader and say, well, you know, Jane, Joe over here, he's doing better than you. He's got a team as big as you do. He has a team bigger than yours. You need to catch up with him. If you're making those types of mistakes, you need to stop. When you're talking to Jane, Jane is the only one who exists. When you're talking to that individual leader, they are the one who exists. You don't compare them with anyone else. You don't build them up around anyone else unless you're edifying them. And it's a reason, there's a reason for it. Same way, when you're talking to Korea, your focus is on Korea. You're not there to brag about the U.S. You're not there to brag about other countries. You're there to talk about Korea. When you're talking to the U.S., you're not there to talk about Korea. So when you talk about diversification of your income and diversification of your global expansion into these other markets, it's extremely important to understand the importance of imperative move to not, not downplay their effectiveness or lack of attention toward them because you're constantly focusing on something else that you can't get your mind on. Network marketers are, there's a lot of ADD network marketers. You're talking to them and their minds everywhere and consequently they're not giving the attention where it needs to be. Give your attention where it needs to be at that given moment and then move on and schedule yourself to place your attention specifically directly exclusively where it needs to be now i'm talking very fast because i want to get to our guest tonight we're going to bring our guest on here in just a moment i want you to listen to the areas of expertise that we're going to be tagging on and this is all about the winning approach the sustained prosperity system is a global action it's all about action traction rank advancement prosperous positioning it's about winning it's not about losing it's about gaining the advancement of your prosperity now only way you can do that in network marketing, there's a, there's a secret here. And this secret is something that will outdo any secret there is. You know what my secret is? You know what Mario's secret is? You know what Izzy's secret is? And back, by the way, we're going to bring, bring you the Izzy tonight. And that's just the way it is. We're going to bring you the Izzy. But you know what the real secret of winning in network marketing is? If someone asked me what is the number one reason that I can win in network marketing is that no one can outfriend me. I never meet a stranger. I walk up to anyone. Our confidence levels must be risen up. You must rise that up. Some of you are walking in the door of network marketing and your confidence level is not where it needs to be. One of the greatest things that when you learn the profession of network marketing, when you understand what to do and how to do it, your confidence level grows with that. One of the main reasons people have a lack of confidence within something they're doing is because they're walking blind and they're very insecure where they're walking. It's like walking through the forest with a blindfold on in the dark and you don't know where your feet are going. Anyone would be scared. Anyone would be insecure. Anyone would be cautious with every step that they're making. But when you know where you're going and you know the direction you're going to take and you know your goal of where you're going to wind up, you know exactly what actions to do. You know exactly what stride to take. You're going to walk through your business with a confidence that you've never had before. And we're giving that to you with this training on a consistent basis to take your level of confidence to the top. Now, as your confidence moves up, you're also rising that ability to approach people. The winning approach. The winning is approach about winners approaching winners. Winners. And you are a winner if you're on this call. I am absolutely tickled about our guest tonight. What a man of integrity and class. Uh, the guy just... He, he just spills out class. I mean, uh, when you talk about someone like Izzy Matos, 
Izzy Matos, when he comes across, he comes across as if he should be a movie star in some kind of a classic movie, you know, that just – he, he – that romantic movie. He just, he just has that look. He just has that uh, finesse. He has that ambiance about his charisma about it. Not everyone has this charisma. And Izzy and I have been talking about this charisma and, and the battles around the charisma and how you're perceived. Obviously, you know, me, I, I, I can talk to a dog, I can talk to a pig, I can talk to a person, I can talk to a rich person, a poor person, I can talk to anyone that exists because I just love people, you know? And Izzy does as well, and, and the thing that I noticed about Izzy, and Mario will vouch for what I'm about to tell you, Izzy is probably one of the most honest, upright men, persons, that you will ever meet in the network marketing profession. He's one of those kind of people that you could, you feel like you could just hand your bank account over to him and tell, tell him, watch this for me. I'm going to be gone for six months. And every, every penny would be there when you came back. But this guy has a heart bigger than the moon. He cares about his people. If you want to know how to build, build a good, solid, strong organization or even an international organization, let me tell you, you will never build it unless you have a big heart and people know that you care. Because when you see the U.S., you're going to see a lot of hype. You're going to see a lot of uh, craziness here. You're going to see a lot of people build, build their organizations. And you know that some of them are just not legitimate. Some of them are just not straight up. And that's the reason they can't build outside the U.S. Because outside the U.S., immediately, flag goes up and it tells that those people not to trust that kind of person. The reason that Izzy Matos has been so dynamic in his international expansion of his organization and team is because he has integrity. And if you have integrity, let me tell you, whatever you have at the top is going to go all the way down to the bottom. If you have a lack of integrity at the top, it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. If you have honesty at the top, it goes all the way to the bottom. If you have gentlemen, at the top or a lady at the top. You have someone who actually cares about the way they present themselves and how that they, that image that they portray for the company. It starts at the top and it goes all the way to the bottom. Mr. Izzy Matos, I'm gonna let Mario, I'm gonna really hand it over to him because I feel like I should. Izzy has been such, in, in my way, an impact on me because I thought, does anyone like this exist anymore? <laughs> the network marketing that actually can portray this type of an image. And I really am impressed, Izzy. I mean, you go over the top when it comes to being that kind of person. I, I really, really am impressed with the way you present yourself. Mario, you have anything? Yeah, to say well, well, I mean, I agree absolutely with everything you're saying. And Izzy has this something special about him that he makes you feel like family. Now, Izzy and I are not related, but I, I feel like we're family, right? The first time we met, I was in Puerto Rico. I was working as a corporate guy, and you know, like always, my job was to work with the top distributors in each company. That's where I met you, Jeff, 15 years ago, and we've been all around the world. And you know what? That's where I met Izzy, you know, being the top leader of that company. So uh, when I was there in Puerto Rico, you know, Izzy and I talked, but he was in Rincon, right? Your home yeah. on the beach was, it was about two, three hours away. And Izzy's like, hey, I want to come down there and meet you. And he drove two or three hours to sit down and talk. And we had a great conversation. I felt like family. And then after, he drove two or three hours back. Now, what does that say right there, right? Person of integrity, a person that's very passionate. I consider him a great friend, a great, he's, he's family and he's very de dedicated to his people. It's an honor, Izzy, to have you on the webinar tonight. Thanks for joining us. Well, there's one thing to be said about the two of you. There's a principle called edification. Man, I'm gonna record this, I'm gonna broadcast it throughout my organization. I don't really know what to say. Um, for me, this is a milestone. I've been in the industry a long time, done a lot of great things, but to be listed among the people that you guys have on this series of seminars, and to share a screen with the two of you, I might as well hang my hat up. It's just not going to get any better than this. So thanks, guys. 
Well, it's a pleasure. Izzy, we're going we're gonna to get into the drilling of this call because I'm going to hit it fast. We've already said some very important factors when it comes to building international. Some of the people on this call have a desire to build. They're, they're, say they're in the U.S. or say they're in their other countries and they want to build outside their countries. And I just, I just now finished up a, a, an hour-long call with Korea. And after this, I have an hour-long call with Mexico. And, and, and this is the fact. And it's not fair to say, but I'm going to say it. I'm a Caucasian male. It's easy for a Caucasian male that lives inside the United States that speaks English to build anywhere in the world. I mean, that's just, I have the English that's easy for me to find a translator for in any country. I have uh, the skin color that is accept accepted almost anywhere in the world. And um, I live in the U.S., which is accepted as someone who does international business anywhere in the world. Some people don't have that. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. This is a this is a fact-oriented call. This is a fact-oriented webcast. Even inside the United States, even though we're a multicultural country built with every type of color, every type of origin, every type of race, every type of language you can imagine that comes here. I know it's unfair, but there's so many people inside the United States that wonder why they can't get past their box, even inside the United States. If I have an African-American leader that comes into my team, the first thing I'm going to tell that person be careful. Don't surround yourself with people just exactly like you. I surround myself with diversity. I want every color, every race, every language, every type of person around me because I know that the United States is a melting pot of every culture, every country in the world. And if you can win the United States, you can win the world. But some people lock themselves into a box, don't they? Some people don't have the ability to win anyone outside their box. They're African-American, sometimes they surround themselves with African-Americans. If they're Asian, they surround themselves with Asians. If they're Latino, they surround themselves with Latino. And then it's hard for them to reach out and create other cultures. Do you have anything that you'd like to say about that to bring light uh, to this? Because I know that you, and I said this earlier to you on a private call, Izzy is Puerto Rico, he's, that's, that's U.S., it's U.S. territorial uh, area, but that's primarily a Spanish combination speaking English country within our country. There's some people, when they look at Puerto Rico, they don't consider it even the U.S. I mean, it's funny, it's, it's, but it is. But you have the ability to reach out to the Latino market, the Spanish speaking market, and the U.S. market, the English market, and other English markets. But you speak English extremely well and Spanish. So you probably feel this very personal. And I'm well, saying all this because there's some Spanish leaders out there that don't speak English that you wish could win the entire world. And sometimes not knowing English can hold you back. Is that correct? There's a lot of truth to that, Jeff. And let me, let me first state that being Puerto Rican has almost backfired with me. Um, as Mario can attest, we, we've kind of spoken about this in the past. For the longest time, I was the most Anglo Puerto Rican anybody met. And when we launched our, our Latin markets, I had spent so much time in the Anglo market that I had forgotten literally the entire language. So as I was recruiting and doing meetings in the Spanish market, I did it butchering the language. So I kind of came across as an Anglo. Um, you know, you love to share stories. I remember when we launched Mexico, I was standing in front of a group of prospects and leaders. There must have been about six or 700 people there, and I'm the big gun. And what I wanted to say to the crowd was in my most passionate sense, I want you to turn to the person next to you and embrace this opportunity. But since I wasn't familiar, and you want to talk about this, about the cultural aspects, what I actually said is I want you to turn to the person next to you and fondle them. The place fell apart. It created kind of an uproar, but we sponsored everybody in the room because we made light of that. Um, you are right. Having an Anglo presence in a lot of these markets does carry some weight. But what I'm learning now is that it's such a small world, Jeff, and it's such a um, needed circumstance, what we bring in this profession that if handled correctly, and if you're walking the walk and not just talking the talk, it radiates. And if people see a true value, it transcends that cultural mindset. You have to be sensitive to the people that you're talking to. You have to be sensitive to the cultural mores that they're dealing with and what their respective economic needs are. Um, along those lines, we're at a crazy time in our industry. People today have kind of lost sense of where this industry really sits. When you and I broke into this industry, 
30, 40 years ago, if you were making ten, twenty thousand dollars a month, you're a hero. But today we see synthetically created, and that's another conversation, incomes of a hundred, two hundred, a million dollars a month that aren't duplicatable. There's a lot of hype going on, and that really diffuses the real interest in this industry, this profession, because it's not real. So to build globally, you need to be sensitive to what the real numbers are and present this in an ethical and duplicatable and attainable format. Um, that's the first thing that I do on a global presence. I understand what the local needs are, where the people are in those respective areas, and I help position what we do so that it's realistic and attainable to them. They expect me to come in with um, barrels blazing and the banners unfurled, you know, jumping over the hill. I don't do that. I'd rather come in a little bit more soft-spoken, attentive to what their, their situation is, and fill that void. I hope that makes sense. It totally does. By the way, Izzy, how many countries do you have organizations in at this, at this time in your, in your career? Right now, how many, how many countries are you building in? You know, I knew you were going to ask me that, so I, I, I hadn't looked, and I figured I would take a look. I remember 30 years ago, just being um, national was a big deal. Going into Canada was like, woohoo. I just checked. I am um, in 60 active countries, and I have 15 countries pending opening. So I guess that makes about 75 countries that I've got a presence in. So, so everyone that's on this twice. webcast tonight, I need you to understand, Izzy is not on this call just because he's just a buddy. You know, obviously he's on this call because we care a lot about him and we respect him and we're friends with him. But at the same time, did you hear that? He's in approximately, you know, 75 countries building internationally. Now, this is not an easy build. I can remember Izzy building in my international market one of the first times I built international. I, I took like $280,000 out of my income just to travel for a year and a half because I was traveling extremely hard. It's expensive to build international and some people are not cut out for it. Some people go too quick. Some people are not ready for it. And then when they are ready for it, sometimes people neglect it when they should be spending some of their income to actually travel and do more vacations in areas where they're potentially going to be opening their business or building their business in. Can you give us some insight on this? Because this is obviously there's some tricks to approaching people. And I don't want to use the word tricks. There's there, let's say that there's methods of approaching people internationally. And, yeah. and how do you do it? Because you're a people person. I am too. We, we, we get good at this because when people ask me, what do you do? I say, well, I'm on vacation 12 months out of the year and this is how I build my business. You know, I mean, I love to say that just to see what the look is on their face. How do you approach people when you're traveling? How do you, and you just came back from Paris, right? Just yes, I did. For a few days and now you're back and enjoying life. How do you approach people? I'm a plan B kind of guy. I talk to everyone. I talk to the maitre d', I talk to the concierge, I talk to the waiter, I talk about what they do how they enjoy what they're doing and if that's really okay, what's interrupt them. For a second. Did everyone hear this? He's not a whale hunter. He's not an elephant hunter. He's going after waitresses. He's going after maitre d's. He's going after the normal people that we see every day. He's not after the big fish because some of you get your mind. I got to find that big networker so I can bring in their big organizations and their influence. Sorry, I had to interrupt you there. No, every you're right. top leader does what Izzy just does. I talked, I talked to the lady that her husband put my Wi-Fi in my house, you know? So, sorry no. about that, Izzy. I had no, it's okay. That's it's such a beautiful point, what you just made. I drive management in my company crazy because when we travel around the world and we hop into the Uber cabs or whatever we're using, I'm always sitting in the front seat talking to the driver, asking him about, you know, how he enjoys driving, why he does it, if, it what he want, if it's what he wants, I'm the first person to compliment the concierge on how well they registered me and I edify them. And, and I say, you know, I'd love to have someone like you in my operation. So I'm big on that, Jeff. That's just me. Um, it's not the old three-foot rule because that implies that you want to talk to everyone and anyone. I've become a lot more selective in my old age. I want to talk to the disenfranchised. I want to talk to the frustrated. I want to talk to the failures of the world because they're the ones that are most likely to really give it that effort because they understand what opportunity is. You know, 11 years ago. You said, Mario, 
Did you hear what Izzy just said? He said, I want to talk to the failures of this world. You know, you hit a button, right? I just did a blog on my global prosperity marketing.com. Did you know the top professional companies in the world? I'm not talking about network marketing. I'm talking about corporate fortune 500 companies. Strategists want to put people who have failed on their strategy boards because they understand things better than the people who have never failed and people who don't fail never do anything anyway. Some people just study, they study data, they do whatever, but you just hit the nail on the head. I have found that the best leaders are the leaders who have fell flat on their face, but they're still getting up. I love what you just said. Uh, you're giving us a lot of good nuggets tonight. Thank you so much. Keep going. No, for me, Keep for going. me, that's a for me, that's a cornerstone, Jeff. I mean, everybody wants to go out there and bring in the Mario's of the world and the Jeff's of the world or the Adler's or the Gage's and the rest of those guys. They're all happy in their own little world. I'd rather go after the person that tried to do X company, didn't have a system, didn't have upline support, wasn't married to the right structure, and show them the way that we do the business. Give them a better opportunity in a better way. Just the other day, I um, spoke to a very dear friend of mine that I've known for 30 years, cajoling him to do network marketing, Decided not to do mine, went a different way, had the experience, but didn't quite get the results that he wanted. So naturally, now we're engaged because I follow a system. I have simplified what I do. I have not taken it to the extreme. And I, I, I love what you and Mario have put together with the paperwork and whatnot. Um, I'm just not that detailed and that organizationally oriented. So I just follow a very simple, basic pattern, get my people to a level, and then I let them unfurl their wings. Um, I don't want to go after the big fish. There are a lot more minnows and sardines than there are whales and sharks. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that part. I got a question for Izzy. Yes, absolutely. You would. You would. <laughs> and I'm sure you've had this question many times, uh, speaking Spanish and English. But uh, let's say your, your company are, is about to open up a Latin American country. You know, a lot of times you'll get people in your group that, that respect you and they, they ask you, they're like, Izzy, how can I build in that country when I don't speak Spanish? And so I want you to talk about the language barrier. You know, it's something that I've encountered too. I don't speak the Malaysian dialects. I don't, um, I, I don't speak French. I don't speak Italian. So I've encountered those issues as well. And what I've done is found those disenfranchised people that speak that language within my organization, working deeply, aligning themselves, aligning myself with them. They see it as a plus for them, not realizing that there's a real symbiotic benefit here. They get to work with me, I get to work with them, we both get to accomplish the same aspect. So that's kind of how I overcome it. It's easier to use English as your base language because you can translate out from there. So someone that has that in common with you, you can bridge it very easily. Language is the least of the circumstances to overcome. You know, my, favorite, my favorite concept is that we all laugh and cry the same. We share the same glory, we feel the same pain. Everything else is academic. If you can tap into that empathy, you're, you're cooking. So language it's isn't the issue. that you care, right? It's showing people that you love them. You know, I, I was talking just earlier to my wife just a moment ago, and one of the things that we were discussing was uh, people really do need to know you care. I, I'm Again, I'm, I'm probably one of the most hardcore, brash trainers there is when it comes to training. But one of the things that has always caught, caught me was that I do truly care about the people I work with. And Izzy, that's one of the things I wanted to bring out tonight. You actually do cross those language barriers. Even though we do talk about the fact learn English if you possibly can because it's going to help you reach into all the world. Surround yourself with diversity as much as you can so that you don't look like you're in a box. You know, build within those markets that you're, that's different than you so that you can actually reach the world. But the one true common denominator that we do have is that we all need to know that the people that we're working with care. Because 80% of the people who join network marketing join on emotion and we build on emotion. We drive it on emotion. And if we can't, if we can't care about our team, our team finds that out very quickly. And can you give us an example of 
how that that one component one component has changed the dynamics within your organization and how it actually causes you to fit in your organization because I'm sure that's one of the major keys with, with man your you know you talk about pushing a button that's a button that was pushed with me 30 years ago when I was broken into this industry the first person that got me wanted to turn me into a front-loading mercenary and everybody I saw was nothing more than a check and an end to a means and it just didn't sit well with me I could not grow um, my mentor pulled me aside gave me a mental enema screwed up you know un unhooked my head shook it out and he said son you look at people as a heart, not as a check or as a money sign. And if you look at them as a heart, it's a reflection of you. That's when my success really began to take off, is understanding that their success is a reflection of my willingness to pour into them you know, what I know, realizing their dreams and goals. Everybody talks about that. And everybody says that's the mantra to follow. But everybody's out after those initial fast start checks, those quick start bonuses, making the fast money. It's never going to come if you don't really put those people as your front line. Um, two points I want to bring out. I want to go back to something that you said that's really important. But my front line, my second line, become intimate. They become family. And I commit to them. I will not work with someone that I cannot break bread with, spend time with, travel with, because I will be traveling with them, spending time with them, and breaking bread with them. And if they're just a money sign, I'll never connect with them. But if they are family, I look forward to spending those quality moments that the company affords us. Jeff, I want to get back to something that you said about building globally and how you do it and the most effective ways. I've made the same mistake you did. And in fact, with my current company in my first year, I traveled around the world twice. I filled up my passport one and a half times, had to have it reprinted because I went around on a juggernaut. The reality is, with the advent of tools that we have today, like Zoom, like Skype, like all these other free services, you don't have to leave your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen to build globally. You structure something like this, put together a couple of webinars, a couple of conference calls, and if and when the numbers warrant, then you go. You know, I used to hop on a plane for 10 people. Now, they like my Columbia group. I was on the phone with them this afternoon. They want me to come down to Bogota. I said two things. I need a lot of local food and I need at least 600 people. They've got a hundred more to go. I'm heading there. So the days of having to travel like that, you know, you got to combine fun and pleasure. I took my girlfriend to Paris. We had a great time, talked to a couple of distributors. The whole darn trip was a write-off. I hope she's not watching this. So, you know, you, you make it count. When I go down to Puerto Rico to visit the beach house, I'll stop in at San Juan, do a couple of meetings. It becomes a complete write-off. I'd much rather have the business fit my lifestyle than my lifestyle structured around the business. And I hope everybody understands that. You know, it takes a little while to get there, but once you're there, it just makes doing this profession so much more fun for everybody. Let's, let's talk about lifestyle here because we have a few minutes here that we can really we we can tag in on this. One of the one of the things we talked about earlier was honesty and integrity and what have you. There's so many people that they overshadow their ability to lead or their ability to build because they're always talking about themselves being bigger than they really are or their ego is bigger than their check. You know, they they've they've become someone who reads their own press to where they are they're way up here before they've ever reached that point. And I'm seeing this when we go to different events and you walk into people and it's like, boy, they're dressed flashy. I'm walking in there and I've got my blue jeans on and a t-shirt, you know, and I'm, I'm walking around, I'm watching some of these people that have really never even built that check, but they're walking around dressed like a millionaire because they think if they dress like a millionaire, they're going to be a millionaire. Remember when we used to tell people that or people before us told people that dress for success. And I get that to a certain point, but we're living. Uh, you know what? It, it used to be fake it till you make it. I'd rather go with projected till you perfect it, but from a very low key. There you go. I like that. I like that. So could you give people here some, some bullet points? If you were trying, if you wanted to build in a, in a country, you want to gain some connections in a country that they've never been in before and they know their company is about to open up in a certain country and they don't know anyone there, what hint would you give them? How, did, how, would, they, how would you tell them 
to find new prospects in a country they know zero people okay. in that country. Can you give us an insight of how you what I wanna, what I, First, what I want to do, Jeff, is give your people kind of a, a relief valve. Companies go into these foreign countries and they see people like Mario, like yourself, like myself go in, and all of a sudden there's an international organization. People like us who've been around a while, we live in a different reality. We've created our own world, but we also function within the real world. After a while, it's easier to do the international because you've done the diligence. So right. don't be put off by what we do. It's only built over time. And how did we get here? The way that I built my international organizations, and I teach everybody this, I hope it you know, falls in line with what you and Mario are doing. I think global, but I work local. I build and work very deeply. Uh, perfect example, we built in the Dominican Republic. I just finally uh, came back from opening that up to some really wonderful success, but I learned to love Dominican food. I'd go into every Dominican restaurant that I could. I talked to the Dominican restaurant owners. I talked to the waiters. I talked to the staff, let them know that, you know, they have great ability to meet with people, talk to people. They should be doing something more. What are you doing? Go to this website. And I go through that process and I say, by the way, do you have any people back at home that you think might be interested in this? Onto the internet we go. I did that. Uh, that's how we built Mexico in my company. I started here in New York, sponsored someone who knew somebody in California, worked with them really well. They knew someone in Puerto Rico. I went back home, worked with them. They took me to Mexico. We opened with a thousand people. Um, the same thing in Colombia. I knew someone in New York who had someone in Utah. I worked with them. We built a big group, went to Utah. We were opening in Colombia. They happened to be Colombian. We started doing webinars. And then I went to Colombia. You don't just go to that country. You find the right people that can invest in themselves. They will take you to those countries. Folks, if, you've, if you're starting this business, learn to like foreign foods. Learn to like well, foreign you're delicacies. You're in New York right now, right? Yeah, actually and I am. You're calling us from New York. Uh, you have your home in, in Puerto Rico. You're a global top person, you know, and I get that. And you go to New York. One of the beautiful things about New York, New York has every country in the world in New York City. I mean, there's two million people in New York suburbs that are Russian. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. Two million. If I was going to build a team in Russia, is it easier to find one Russian in Russia? Or is it easier to build a team before we open up in Russia in a company? inside of New York where you have 2 million Russians in the suburbs of New York or 150,000 plus Russians in, in LA, you know, you, you're, you're hitting some, some bullet points here. Like Colombia is a good example. I know Mario has some good influence in Colombia and he has some good influence in a lot of other countries in Central and South America. And, and, and that, that astounds me. But at the same time, you know, if someone were to ask me, how do I, how do I attract Colombia? You realize how many Colombians there are in, in New York, right there where you're at right now. Look how well, many wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're going to say, Miami. if you're going to say that somebody that's listening to this in, in Squeedunk, whatever, doesn't have that same opportunity, let me guarantee you, go out, look around. You'll find a Mexican restaurant. You'll find a Spanish restaurant. We're ubiquitous. We're everywhere. Okay, so we've got the U.S. covered, if, and that's the biggest growing market for network marketing right now. Besides the millennials, it's the Hispanic market. We're receptive. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so you know, no matter where you look, you'll find one of us, and we're friendly people. Let me tell you, it's more than just tacos and auto parts with you know with us. <laughs> you know, we 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 want to grow. We want to invest in ourselves and our families. So there's opportunity to be found. I don't care where you are, unless you're living under a rock in a cave on a mountain, and you want to be a hermit. You'll find people to talk to that will lead you to the right people. It we're, just takes we're, time. We're a country of immigrants, right here. Absolutely. And if, I, I was just thinking about, you know, the company we're in, we opened up Korea just a few months back and it just astounded me uh, because I think about Atlanta and the whole eastern side of Atlanta, Georgia, you know, Buford, Doraville area is almost 100% Korean now. I mean, it's a huge population of Korea and yet there was no major influx of people reaching out to those Korean markets within the United States inside the East Coast, maybe in LA and some places like that, but not in New York and not in, in Atlanta and not in some of the major cities. 75% of the population of the United States is east of the Mississippi River. And, and everyone who lives on the West Coast thinks that all the population is in California. You know, they don't get it. 
75% of the United States population is on the East Coast, and most network marketing companies do not build on the East Coast like they do the West Coast because most of them are created out there. Most of them got their first start out there. Most of them want to reach that Asian market, so they build in the California market first, and they ignore 75% of the United States population and don't build in New York, don't build in Philly, don't build in Atlanta, they don't build in Charlotte, they don't build in Miami, they don't build in Boston. They don't build in Detroit. They don't build in these heavy cities on the East Coast that are a diversity of all of European markets and Anglo-Saxon markets and Latino markets. And let me tell you, you guys, Izzy, winning the world, I'm hearing a clue here today. If someone wants to win the world, we have to win the U.S. And we have to find diversity inside the U.S outside of our box. Mm -hmm. If we're Latino, let's find other cultures outside of our box. If we're Anglo-Saxon, let's find other cultures outside of our box. If we're Asian, let's find other cultures outside of our box. And if we want to win the world, find it right here. That's the cheapest way to build a large. I would rather go to Russia with a hundred Russians in my team out of New York city than to find one Russian in Russia. I'd rather go to Columbia with a hundred Colombians out of Miami or New York than to go to Columbia and find one Colombian. You know, Jeff, along those, along those lines, you brought up um, a very valid point earlier about when to go global and how to go global. It, it's all well and good to follow that. You know, I did it for the same reason you did to diversify. My income is immune to local variants. If one economy falls, my check isn't going to go south. When the U.S. market failed, my check grew because the foreign markets more than made up for it. So I've been you know, well blessed in that regard. But if people are thinking about going global, there's a great time to go global in their career in this profession. And that's once they've understood what to do. You don't want to I jump agree. the gun and jump into the global market right away. Build your local market, get some experience, start to work deep, and let it evolve organically by doing exactly what we've talked here. Um, you know, work deep, find those people, let them bring them to you. You know, you talked about Russia. I did go to Brooklyn, New York, and I did sponsor three Russians. And we opened up Russia with something like 450 Russians registered in our organization. And I've yet to set foot in Moscow, but those rubles translate to dollars really, really well. Mario and I have been to Moscow a few times. Yes, we have. It's, uh, Next time you go, I'm going with you. It's been fun. It's been fun. Let me, let me tell you, I have probably enjoyed the content of this call more than I should have because I relate to it so well. I've been to like 60 countries, you know, and I've, I've enjoyed building in the majority of those countries. And one of the things that I truly have enjoyed is the cultures. Uh, getting, getting the, it's, it's one thing to experience these international cultures that live inside the United States in their inner sector, you know, in their communities and what have you. It's another thing, once you have started to build those organizations, those teams, to go to those countries and get off the beaten paths. Absolutely. I, I Absolutely. remember going, and I'm going to kind of close the call with a kind of segue here, but I remember several years ago going to Hungary and and I remember flying into Budapest, and we took a trip on the road about 100 kilometers southeast to a town called Kiskun Felishaza. Beautiful place, just picturesque, gorgeous place. But the people I was with in my organization, wonderful people. The culture. I mean, I go to, I get there to some of my buddy's house. You know, we get there, and the lady that is, the mother of two of my distributors. She was in her 60s. She rode her bicycle 20 kilometers in one direction just to go get groceries on the, in the basket of her, her bicycle to come back and cook because she knew I was coming to visit her, you know? And so I get to her house. It's a feast. She cooks. She did that early morning trip to the grocery store and comes back and she cooks all day long. When we get there, it's a celebration. It's a true, harmonious relationship marketing experience at its greatest, you know? And then we had such a great time there building in, in, in that area. Of course, we go over into Romania, and we kind of get in trouble, come back across the border, and we do crazy stuff. And, and one of the 
one of the most beautiful things is we, we went to one of the homes on a ranch there in, in Hungary and the guy owned a horse ranch and they believe in workhorses there. And we get in the wagon. He has this large wagon pulled by six horses, big workhorses. I felt like I was in the Clydesdale buggy, you know, and, um, and we, it, we started right before dark and those horses just creeped through the mountains and through the, the meadows and through the trees and through the valleys. And we've seen some of those beautiful, we just creep for hours talking, building relationships, building relationships. I've been in Southern Japan and some of the craziest, beautiful places you've ever seen, building relationships. I've been in Australia and New Zealand, building relationships, been in Russia, building relationships, been all over Europe, building relationships, been down in Mexico, building relationships, been in different countries all over the world. And the one thing that we've talked about tonight that is just such a common denominator, there is a family that God gives us. And then there's a family that we create all over the world. And we're doing that. And, and Izzy, you're part of that family. You're part of our family. You're part of our, our, our brotherhood, our, our, uh, our family and network marketing. And I tell you, we sincerely bond, you know, we're, we're part of that to get, you not, we're not in the same company. We've, we're not working the same company. It doesn't matter. We're part of the same profession, that relationship marketing profession. And I would have no problem whatsoever saying, Hey, let's meet up in Puerto Rico soon and hang out because I just really do think the world of you I really do. And Mark, well, you know what? Next, next yeah. time you and Mario are in Puerto Rico, you need to take the ride towards my end of the Island. Yes. Stay at the beach house. I'm 50 feet off the water. You guys know that. Um, just finished the two apartments, thanks to network marketing. You know, it's changed my life 10 years ago. As you know, they shut the lights off in my home. I was sitting in there in the dark, and here it is 10 years later. The lifestyle's back, and we've got an 8,000-square-foot beach house to share with all our friends. Get on down there, guys. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. I look forward to it, and, uh, and I know we're going to have a good time when we do. It's such a pleasure. Mario, thanks, guys. I appreciate this. A pleasure having Izzy on it. You know, Absolutely. I tell everybody in one of, the, one of the emails, are you going to get your Izzy on tonight? You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's an easy night. Yes, it's an easy did. night for the Sustained Prosperity System webcast on the winning approach. Oh, my gosh. What a blessing it has been to have you on the call tonight. You Thanks, have been guys. on Absolutely. arts tonight on this call. There's people listening, and they're going to sleep tonight without any sleep because of what you've said tonight. Thank you, Mario. Mario, we'll turn it over to you. And Yeah, and I mean, I just want to add to that. And I mean, we're on the call tonight with two great leaders from the profession that have had great success. And so it's a pleasure for me to, to learn from you all. And uh, we've, we've actually learned a lot tonight. And you're both people that, that care. You're genuine and you care. And this is fresh in my mind because I just came back from Mexico. And let me tell you, they realize, you know, when a country opens and you know, all of us Americans go over there and we try to sign up a few leaders. And then, you know, a, a week later, a month later, they're, they're nowhere to be seen, you know? And so they realize that, you know, they, they see if you care, they see if you're genuine, they see if you follow up, they see if you're interested in their success. And I know Izzy, you're there for them and you're a genuine person. You're a person of integrity as well as Jeff. And so, Thank you both for being on the call tonight. And uh, I just want to close with, uh, hey, we have some great speakers. We had a great speaker tonight. We've learned so much. We have some amazing speakers coming up. Is it all right if I mention that, Jeff? Oh, please do. I'm excited about our lineup. We have such, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. All right, so March 3rd, we have Glenn Jensen. And then after that, we have Tom Chenault. Tony Canuli, and then Margie Alaprandi. And the list goes on and on and on. These are leaders that are, are very recognized in the profession, I almost said industry, in the profession. And I uh, also want to remind you that this call is being recorded, and so it will be on Jeff's Facebook. Uh, it will also be emailed out from Jeff, that link. So anything else you want to add, Izzy, to end the call? I think what you guys are doing for the profession and the industry is remarkable. Um, there are a lot of people out there that put noise out. Uh, we seem to have more noise in this industry than ever, but you guys 
are actually providing traction. Your system works, you're, got, you're ethical, and you've got the right focus. You know, Jeff, one of these days, Mario will get to work on something together again, but we're still locked arm in arm. Separate companies, but commonality of goal and purpose, and that's really what this is all about. It is, absolutely, it sure is. Beyond that, you know, I appreciate what your words just said. You know, the reason that we're doing this webcast is because, and I'm gonna say this from the heart, this industry has so many orphans. So many people that join it, they, they buy the big package over emotion and they wake up the next day, they don't know what to do. Their upline just joined the week before them, they don't know what to do. People are lost, they, they work hard, harder than they should because they're trying to fight through it instead of actually knowing what. To, there's so many orphans that have not been embraced and mentored the way they need to be mentored to be the success that they could be. And so my heart is in this profession. My heart is to help the leaders in this profession to learn more so they don't get left behind. You realize how many people join our industry and profession and they never they never get success and they quit and they will never touch it again because of the experience that they've had. True. That right there touches my heart because network marketing changed my life. Network marketing changed the way I look at things. And I know that there's some good people that have been some potential great leaders within our profession that never had the chance of getting there just because no one cared just because no one gave them the nuggets that we're giving them for free just because we're trying to reach out and help people with this webcast. This is what it's all about is in your, your we're all in the same harmony. Thus this talking. Tonight. I, have, because, I have one yeah. complaint about tonight's call. I have been on every one of your broadcasts since you started this. <clears throat> I have this yellow pad filled with notes. Tonight's the only night that I left it blank. So I need to pick up next week and start filling it in again. I'll, always learning, always growing. I'll, I'll send you a recording of tonight's webcast so you can take <laughs> All right, buddy, thanks. Thanks go. again, guys. Uh, it's, it's always good to be with you, Izzy. You're such a good friend and, and, uh, and a professional. Building in all these countries all over the world, there's no one that could have said what you could have said tonight any better because you said it with a heart. You can't build international without a big heart. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be on the Sustained Prosperity System webcast tonight, Mario. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Izzy, for joining us this evening. And thank you all for joining us. I know we've had many people all throughout the U.S. and internationally, Latin America and Asia. I want to remind you that this call is being recorded, and it will be sent out to all of you. And uh, this, this webinar is for everybody. Doesn't matter what country you're from, doesn't matter what company you're with, it's for everybody to, to help you build your business. So with that said, please continue to join us next Thursday. We have some great speakers coming up and have a good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Busy. All right. Bye guys. Good night, everyone. Good night.